How is everybody doing today? My name is Master Zero, and welcome back to another reaction video. This time we are reacting to How to Terraform Venus Quickly by In a Nutshell. Alright, so as we continue In a Nutshell week, as I've doth declare, uh, it's How to Terraform Venus, and yes, I'm going to the oldest one that I missed on to the newest one. Save the newest one for last, because y'all guys are keep uh, telling me to react to it and stuff like that, so I'm happy to oblige, but I'm gonna make y'all wait for it. <laughs> no, my, my theory is like just old to new. That's literally what I'm doing. I'm not making y'all wait for anything or nothing like that, but on to this video, like, how to terraform Venus. Like, Venus is... As far as I know, it's relatively way closer to the sun than Earth is, so I'm really, really interested to see how they're gonna terraform it. But, uh, yeah, I... I have no idea. I'm not going to sit here and, like, say I know what Venus even is. Like, I know Mars, duh, because that one's kind of obvious now. Everybody's like, oh, we got to go to Mars, and there's, like, pictures of Mars and what it is and stuff like that now. But Venus, I... Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> so let's just watch the video. Without any further ado, here is how to terraform Venus quickly. Leaving Earth to find new oh, homes in space that music. is an old dream of humanity. And yes. will sooner or later Star Trek. be necessary for our survival. The planet Sad, that gets the most attention true. is Mars, a small, toxic, and energy I was just saying that. That just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed good humans enough. huddled in underground cities. So depressing, bro. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venus, He's one making of the a most point. hostile and deadly Ooh. bases in the solar system, and turn say deadly? it into a colony? Not by I'm building sorry? lofty cloud cities, but by creating a uh, Star Wars prequels Earth. going on. It might be easier than you think. Go on. Okay, you got me excited. Nice pyramid, right? I saw a pyramid. It's like a game now for me. What does the monkey have? Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system, with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius. So I was right. Hot enough to melt lead. Is hot. This heat is due to the most extreme greenhouse effect in the solar system. I love system. the music in this video. CO2 is great at trapping heat. Even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. I got you, I got Venus's you. Venus's atmosphere is 97% CO2. Also, Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 into the ocean. Oh the my god! Would kill you instantly. It's a truly horrible That was place. way too graphical for a Curse Cat video, oh my god! First and foremost, Venus Dude. is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. Surface gravity is a big problem when Not to scale. the Thank you. system, because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Venus's size means nah man, that's like King Kai's planet. Goku, just get stronger. <laughs> god damn. Billions of humans and Not over the birds. Of animals. With oceans, lush this forests, is very weird, and a though. Beautiful blue sky. It's like, what would it be like? A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. Okay. It will take a few generations. So, like a lot of videos, this one is fiction. Challenge, like building the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. That's why the monkey then, got the pyramid. It's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Before anything else, we need to cool Venus down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere. Already As smart. Didn't even think of that. a lot of it. Around 465 million billion tons. How do we do that? Wow. There are a few options. A lot we of zeros. We create giant solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that heat up the atmosphere so much that it's blasted into space. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity or one planet size thousands <laughs> of years to remove the atmosphere. Another way is to sequester the atmosphere, binding the CO2 in different compounds through okay. chemical reactions. We could mine elements like calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot them at Venus via mass driver systems, electric rails that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. Right the on. would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates basically forever. But the scale makes the whole thing it's like oxygen not included stuff we going on. Several hundred Gotta convert stuff to other stuff to make it usable. The rest of the CO2 this way. Seems like a waste of material and might take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work. I love how he's just like, yeah, they're ridiculous, man. Literally. 
by constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze the atmosphere. Okay. The doesn't need to be complex like I said, ridiculous massive, at the beginning. Very thin no, he's talking about now. Little structural support. Building such a large flat surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. Oh no! <laughs> so instead of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Ah. Annular slats of angled mirrors Smart. can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, okay. reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back, balancing the force on the front and holding them in position. Very smart. After a few years of getting the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays I don't know what to look at. deadly. Until after some 60 years, it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Suddenly, the Only 60 sun years, though? On Venus as CO2 turns Seems to very short to me. And begins to rain down. A constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years. Where's Noah at? <laughs> the pressure and temperature <laughs> suddenly begin to drop in unison. For almost a century, puddles turn into lakes and oceans. Ah. The surface temperature is now it, minus its version of ice age. Celsius, and the pressure has dropped to man made ice age, I guess. The pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. <laughs> what remains of the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over Venus's surface. Yay! But the frozen CO2 remains a bit of a problem. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. So we got need a dilemma to going on. Doing that. Tell One me how you solve it. to cover it all with cheap plastic insulation and cover it up with ground-up Venus rock or water oceans. Okay. Although some planetary scientists <laughs> will be very stressed out about us building a new planet <laughs> containing a potential time Senate, bomb like that. A few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. It's just a ticking Another time bomb. The solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. We can make this more efficient by using mass. There's those tubes again. Rockets, I love those tubes. That mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. Whatever we end up doing with the atmosphere, Why, you have an exosuit? Forward, we need water, which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has twice as much water Europa. as Earth's ocean. Sounds exotic. Now, catching a moon and transporting it through the solar system... That's a lot of exactly liters of water, easy. bro. So instead, it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus huh. using more of those mass drivers. Space I was way ahead of you that time, man. Us a lot of effort and energy. Oh, it's so cool! We stuff I've learned previous... Yeah! Stuff I've learned in previous movies. That Videos, whatever. ...on both ends. Got me really Europa, excited. They do most of the work needed to catapult yeah, our ice that's to cool. Venus. The ice hits the Venus tethers, which gently drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. Okay. In exchange, the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. Huh. I mean, After it makes a few sense. Decades or centuries, Venus would be covered by a yeah, nice, the shallow, frozen ocean take a, while. a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. Oh. A few continents and We've countless add islands that thing formed. This Mirror. is beginning to look a bit like our planet. Now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins. Planting the atmosphere problem? breathable and adding life. First, we need light, though, and we need to heat the planet up again. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 160 sorry? Earth days. So, if we just wow. remove a giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. Yeah. Even without the massive like, atmosphere, right, we're done here. temperatures would reach unbearable levels. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy ah, in again an is... Ah, an artificial day and night cycle. Wow. And melt our water okay. Oceans which would let us completely control how much energy we get. And that is wild! The atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen. So the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria 
which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. Bacteria, okay. We know they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago, they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. But not only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. This way, they will God, this is like big boy brain stuff going on. And prepare it for more complex organisms. On land, our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, okay. billions of trees would spread, creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents. Venus would turn green. To oh, that's wild. Up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and science. It's like all man-made stuff. That's what's already covered with really plants, weird, in my opinion. From our orbital mirrors, so the plants would be active for most of each day. Maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. Make it true! As genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and Michigan? machinery of life expands, we might just engineer life as we need it. All in all, it would take several thousand years to make the atmosphere breathable by humans. In the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing from the anime. Regular clothes Bad with names, oxygen sorry. Mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide, ice, and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Yeah, if you have like processes, a big supply of something, why not use it? Terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. I was also in that Skyhook thing video. Animals roam I still don't like you, buddy. Ecosystems. Sorry. You Citizen did nothing wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be. Millions hate you. of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. Okay. They will see images of the past. How Venus was once the most hostile. I don't want to see that again, man. Thank you. Hundreds of okay. years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. It's bacteria. That's they cool. They barely be able to believe it. Barely. <laughs> like, just word for word what he said. Yeah, I was about to say. It sounds really, really cool, but reality. like I said, the beginning is fiction. And with technology that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's stopping it is our imagination. And that, at least, it's is got a, a point there. that's easy to overcome. Where you think ideas come from to make all this stuff? If you think about imagination. it, your imagination is the only thing stopping you hey, from I was, all kinds of things. It's just in a spill about all imagination, man. Don't take my thunder. And we might just have the right thing to Skillshare. get started. We are big fans of Skillshare. <laughs> I'm getting good at guessing these ads. For all skill it's mostly Skillshare, so. Creative disciplines like illustration, animation, or film and video. Or you could try a class on home decoration, yes. growing house plants, or playing the guitar. There's something for everyone, really. I sold my guitar, the but it's whatever. The first 1,000 Kurzgesagt viewers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial Just of missed it. <laughs> Since we started working with Skillshare, you, our viewers, have taken over 100,000 hours of classes, including our own three Skillshare classes on Good how job. we make our animations. If you want to learn more about motion graphics, give them a try. And if you need an extra little push to get you going, maybe get started with some advice on you check that productive, buddy. and inspiration. We liked the scientific method for artists. Find inspiration. I am an artist that enjoys scientific grow things. Your creative skills by Kendall Hillegas. In this class, Kendall explains her four-phase process name is for amazing. exploring and figuring out your direction as an artist. For us, it was a great way to That's get into the comic flow book of artist, something. but whatever. But anything that makes I feel like you I already feel know. excited and sparks new ideas is a great first step. Exactly. If you want to get creative with new skills and support Kurzgesagt, give it a go. Just might. I keep saying I want to and I never do, but I just might. <laughs> Alright, that was really awesome stuff. And yeah, like, it's it's really, really cool to sit there and watch a video about, like, terraforming Venus. Like, oh, it's so easy to do. Like, in this video, they explain it. It's so easy. Like, nah. Like, in all reality, like, that's why I said at the very beginning. Like, it is fiction. Like, and the reason why I put fiction, because, like you said at the very en end of this video, like, it is possible. Like, technically, it is possible, but... It's, te it's it's in a weird, like, limbo state of, like, yes, it could happen, but it can't uh, kind of thing. And it's like, we still need to make, like, so much more stuff before we even begin to think about doing that. But to, for him to put it in, like, situations like this, like, just, okay, here's the step-by-step -step of how to do it. Like, like the title says, like, how to terraform Venus quickly. Like, yeah, this video did it. <laughs>
<laughs> it explained how to terraform Venus quickly, and I really, really like that. But my god, I could not get over that uh, bird head explosion. Like, holy crap, uh, that, that really got to me. <laughs> Probably more than any scientific thing in this video, that bird exploding really got to me. But yeah, it's really, really interesting stuff. But then like in the back of my mind, I'm sitting there like just it is possible, but it's not likely right now. And it kind of makes me upset. But then like seeing this makes me really excited. So it's a wishy-washy kind of feeling. So yeah, really, really enjoyed this video. Can't wait for the uh, the last one of the week that everybody keeps telling me to do. And obviously it's like the best video ever. So I can't wait for that. So yeah, look forward to it. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like down below because it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos like this one. So with that said, I have been Master Zero. Y'all guys have been fantastic and I will see y'all in the next episode. Later days.